Right, so another tool you might want to use is CyberChef. I had a student solving some of these problems with CyberChef, and that reminded me to take a good look at CyberChef. CyberChef is really fantastic. CyberChef is a tool from GCHQ, which is the British version of the NSA, their code-breaking military group. And um, it's intended to make it possible to do all these common cryptographic operations without writing any programs, without knowing any code. So you go here, and you can put anything you want to transform, any kind of data, you put it up here in the input. So I'll put in hello code breakers, and if there's nothing in the recipe, the output is equal to the input. And now you can just put things in the recipe. For example, it has the Caesar cipher, although they call it ROT13, which is one name for one version of this the Caesar cipher. Here's ROT13. So if you drag ROT13 here, that's the recipe. It will rotate characters by 13, so this hello turns into URYYB. And there's, you can shift it by different amounts, but if you shift it by 13, then of course you've shifted it by half of the alphabet, and if you rotate it again by 13, you get back to where you started. So that's, uh, that's the point of this. Now if you have a part of the recipe you don't like anymore, you can just drag it off and drop it, and that removes it. And you can just build a recipe here with all the transformations you might want. For example, you could do a rot, and then you could do an XOR. XOR combines the bits one by one. So if you go down here, you can XOR with a key. Now if you don't fill in a key, it doesn't do anything. By the way, you can pause one of these. Let me pause this one here. That's frozen. So now I'm back to Hello Code Breakers, going to Hello Code Breakers, because the XOR doesn't do anything when there's no key. Yeah, and um, oh, some other uh, Crypto Pals. I'll take a look at that one a little later. Good. And so anyway, if you give it a key, like 1, then it XORs these things with 1, which will flip the last bit, so it will move them um, by one letter. So hello turns into IDMMN. And if you could give it a key of, say, 11 in hex, then it changes things more. Anyway, and by the way, you could give it 2 bytes of key, and then it will encrypt the first character with the first byte, and the second character with the second byte, and then repeat. So uh, that's the joy of XOR. And so there are a few challenges here you can do just to practice using this tool. You can do amazing things with this tool. By the way, let me just point out, if I do some CyberChef recipe, recipes, here's a list of them. You can do any kind of data transformation very easily here. And people have published recipes to do all these things, extract base 64, uh, group policy, preference password description, um, com scriptlets, extract objects from a squid proxy cache, GPS coordinates from Google Maps, uh, DNS records, um, Microsoft um, disk forensics, getting the timestamps from the master file table, um, decoding PHP GZ inflate, web cells, from PowerShell Meterpreter, you know, all kinds of things you come across, especially when doing forensics or, or uh, reverse engineering or malware analysis, you come across some kind of scrambled data, and CyberChef is a very good tool to unscramble that data. And you can also do the um, alphabetic substitution ciphers here. Let me take a look at my instructions here and see what I planned. How to pause operations. Okay. So there's an XOR, and to break Caesar cipher, there's a brute force. Let me show you that. So if we go here and do the Caesar cipher again, I'll get rid of this XOR. And now I'm going to run this again. This is rotating by 13. Let's just rotate by 3. All right. So here's a simple Caesar cipher. It's moved these letters forward 3 in the alphabet. I'm going to copy this output, clean the recipe, and put that in as the input. So suppose I have scrambled stuff, and I'm trying to unscramble it. There is a ROT13 brute forcer here, which is very nice. Um, ROT13 brute force. If you run that, it will just try every amount. And you can just read through here looking for the one you can read. And there's the one you can read. So that's a brute forcer. And they also have a brute forcer for XOR.
although in that case now here you have a long list to look through but suppose you knew one word like it was going to contain hello you could put that here and then it will only show you the answers that include hello and that's pretty good as you can see if we use XOR which has a bigger key space so let's get rid of the rot 13 and let's use XOR so here's XOR and if I give it a key like 21 well then it becomes kind of unprintable I like to use low numbers so it stays printable all right so if I use a key of 14 it turns into this gibberish so I'm going to copy that and put it up here oops got to get rid of this stuff all right and it didn't work oh the copy didn't work all right copy there we are there now it worked all right let me start with something readable though I've started with a Caesar cipher thing here let's say hello all right there's some readable message and that turns into this junk um, all right so let's copy that and see if it reverses itself and it does okay so this if I had the right key would reverse to the plain message but if I don't know the key I can run an XOR brute force which is here and now it's somewhere in this mess but I have a list of 256 to hunt through and if you had a two byte key it would be a list of 65,000 to hunt through which is pretty hard and so now if you actually can guess one word then you'll see you get cl uh, pretty close it narrows it down so that's the sort of trick you tricks you can play and there's some challenges here where you get some practice using it um, you have the rot routine brute force this is XOR and here's an XOR with a two byte key and so uh, you'll have to read through a long list or you'll have to guess here's XOR followed by base 64 which is another gadget you can drag over so you should try a uh, cyber chef I'll stop this one